The content of this podcast is provided for general informational purposes only and is not intended as, nor should it be considered a substitute for, professional medical advice. Sweaty and piss, sweaty and piss. Menopause makes me sweaty and pissed. <laughs> oh, hello, my darling. Hi, welcome, everybody. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm Karen, Karen Nickel, nurse practitioner. Leanne Morgan, comedian. And this is Sweaty and Pissed, Menopause and More. Way more. Way more. Mm -hmm. You smart thing. Yeah. (laughs) We're going to talk today about how to help somebody by using hormones. Right. Replacement. Right. From a systemic standpoint. Okay. Because we talked about, um, you know, how to use hormones for vaginal dryness, you know, using yes. vaginal estrogen and, and then all the non-hormonal options we have for vaginal dryness. And um, we did get a question from one of our Facebook uh, uh, listeners who um, was wondering, well, it, it, will it help to do systemic hormones to help with the vaginal dryness and, and, other, and, and fix other symptoms as well? So um, this certainly is um, a topic that we'll probably talk about on more than one episode, but we thought we'd start that conversation today okay? and talk about all our options and how it will help with all your symptoms. So, so uh, uh, you know, in the last episode, we talked about the long list of symptoms you can get with hormone imbalance uh, and and many of them are happen when we're in perimenopause where estrogen and progesterone get imbalanced. Typically, we have really quite high estrogen and very low progesterone, and it creates um, a syndrome we call estrogen dominance. And so many of those symptoms are, um, are because of estrogen dominance. And so in that particular case, we're mostly using progesterone replacement in those women and some over-the-counter supplements to lower estrogen. Yes. So, okay. the, so we narrow that gap. So progesterone can be replaced with either um, capsules or creams, or we can use a compounded product called trochies, which are little lozenges that you dissolve under your tongue or in the vocal cavity, which is that little pocket in your cheek. Um, so those are the the main ways we do it. We can do vaginal progesterone, a, va- a vaginal progesterone cream. Some people absorb that much better that way. Uh, so there are a lot of options, especially if you're using a compounded product. And again, for the listeners who might be tuning in for the first time, compounded hormones are are made up by a compounding pharmacist uh, based on the specifications and prescriptions from your practitioner. Uh, so there are a lot of forms that, which they can use to get that hormone to you. So we would use progesterone to replace, obviously, your low progesterone. And the progesterone we would use that I typically use for women, I always use for women, is uh, bioidentical, which means it's molecularly identical to your progesterone that you would make from your ovary. And, um, and then we use things like milk thistle caps and diendolmethylil, which is abbreviated DIM, D-I-M as in Mary, uh, And either one of those can help clear extra estrogen, um, especially from the liver. So we can really balance the estrogen progesterone better. And the milk thistle, you put me on milk thistle, Mm -hmm. dim, and I have a progesterone capsule. Mm -hmm. And so they know progesterone's the good, makes you feel good. Yes. And when you don't have that, you don't feel good. You feel heavy, you don't want to have sex, mm-hmm. You what else? Is don't it, sleep. Don't it's, sleep, because that relaxes progesterone. You get very moody. Moody. Mm-hmm. Oh, murder. Yeah, progesterone is our mood-stabilizing hormone, our sleep-promoting hormone. It um, helps us burn fat. 
It um, is our natural diuretic, meaning it helps get rid of retained fluid. Um, it is, increases our sex drive. And um, from a safety standpoint, the important thing about progesterone is it slows cell growth in the sex organs because it matures the cell um, after estrogen has stimulated the growth of the cell within the cycle. That's a little complicated. But um, your estrogen stimulates cell growth in the sex organs and, and progesterone slows and matures the cell. So it's very important in terms of balancing the stimulatory effects of estrogen. So, Which could they want? I mean, so if you have an abnormal, for instance, if you have an abnormal breast cell, okay, say a, a breast cell has it has become unhealthy, and you have an estrogen and a progesterone receptor on that cell. And so when estrogen, specifically estradiol, attaches to that estrogen receptor on that cell, it makes it grow. Okay. And progesterone, when it attaches to the, its progesterone receptor, shrinks and matures the cell. So if we have too much estrogen influence or estrogen dominant, we're going to have more stimulation of breast tissues, breast cells, normal and abnormal. Okay. So, so, so hormones don't make cancers, but, but the estrogen could stimulate the growth of an abnormal precancerous cell. Okay. So progesterone's the good one. Right. And there is a book, um, and I put it on the book list on our website, um, that Dr. John Lee um, wrote called What Your Doctor May Not Tell You About Breast Cancer. And he speaks in depth about progesterone and its uh, beneficial effects on specifically breast tissue. So if you want to get a much more detailed um, information about that, it's a really good book. It, it's not a medical textbook, but it is a little medically dense um, but it, it's a very good book uh, and can explain a lot about the effects of um, our hormones on our breast tissue. Mm -hmm. And the same thing goes for o ovarian and uterine tissue. Estrogen stimulates it. Like if we have too much estrogen, we become estrogen dominant. We'll develop fibroids and cysts on the ovaries and thickened lining. So we get heavy periods. Uh, painful periods, increased PMS. Not that estrogen's the bad guy. It's not a bad hormone, but it, it just does all that stimulatory work. So if you don't have progesterone that puts the brakes on that, mm -hmm. we have all those symptoms and problems. So Okay. But you put me on it. I remember milk thistle and uh -huh. just urinating all day, <laughs> but that keeps you from retaining fluid. Yeah, yeah, because estrogen tells us to Hold on. store fat and fluid because it's trying to get us ready for pregnancy. And you need extra f fluid to build blood volume when beca you become pregnant. You know, you gain 25% more blood while you're pregnant. So so that is all, it's all doing what it's supposed to do. But unfortunately, it goes a little haywire uh, oftentimes in, in perimenopause. And we'll talk about on another episode when it, what happens when it goes haywire in even younger women in their you know teens, twenties, and thirties? So okay, like things like PCOS. And, yes. Yeah. Okay. So so that's what we do with um, mostly for perimenopause, perimenopausal women. Also, testosterone can be low during that time period. So sometimes we replace testosterone, and testosterone helps us with spatial analytical thinking, decision making sense of self-confidence, self-assuredness, physical stamina, muscle mass, bone mass, sex drive. Oh, so Lord. It's, it's a good one. Yeah, it is a good one. If you don't right, have Leah? all that, yeah. And I didn't. Mine was zero, wasn't it? I mean, mine was very low. Yeah. So you put me on a testosterone cream, mm -hmm. which I would like to have more. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, are you, are mean, you using what I you have? I would like to have better thinking. <laughs> yes. But uh, but yes, that that is a good one. Yeah. And if you don't have any, yeah, a lot of uh, women who are especially, uh, and not that it has 
you have to be a businesswoman to feel this, but I, I hear this from my patients who are business people that they feel like they lose their their edge, edge their game. They're not on their game um, when they start losing testosterone. It's that it's that important. Okay, let me ask you this real quick as a side note. What mm-hmm. about men? Same thing? Mm-hmm. They feel like they're losing their edge? Mm-hmm. And also, you know, because some a lot of times when when men are losing testosterone, um, you will the the first thing they typically the first things that they will notice are, you know, not feeling on their game, irritability, depression. They get more mood symptoms long, usually long before they lose sex drive. Oh yeah, yeah, that's usually the last to go. Yeah, and and at fifty, men have about half the testosterone level they have at 20. Really? Mm-hmm. I mean, it naturally falls, you know, but, but, and so the mood symptoms are often the first signs of, of a dropping testosterone level in men. Okay. Yeah. We went through that. And you, and then, and <laughs> then, um, Chuckina mm-hmm. started, of a feeling frisky. I, and I thought, what, I mean, he's never not felt frisky. Mm-hmm. But I had a little, I had a little time in there where I, I was able to be left alone, frankly. <laughs> and then they came back, and I went, "What have you done to him?" And you said, "Lynn, he's played tennis, and he he's playing tennis, and and he's active, and he's built it up himself again." Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exercise thought, will really help the test. <laughs> But I'm hiding that tennis did you, I was bag. Say, bag. Did, you, did you did you break his racket? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. exercise will help raise testosterone levels in, in women men. too. Yeah. And, well, it, it, in women, it really just helps with better balance too. Yeah. It really does. It does. And this little thing right now. Let me say that, Karen. <laughs> Has been to the gym this morning. Mm-hmm. After probably tending to, I don't know, five thousand people in the last two days, <laughs> and then you went to the gym, mm-hmm. and then you got a really cute haircut. Yeah. Um, but I know what you're saying. Yeah. And I've just got to get back on it. But but well, and it'll help sleep. It'll yeah. help attitude. It'll help depression. It'll help. There's so many things that and, exercise. Yeah, just God energy. wanted us to. Mm-hmm. Move. So what exercise do you like to do? I like to dance. I like jazzercise, and I like a Zumba, Zumba. and that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. When Years ago when I did CrossFit and did all that, I like to lift. Mm-hmm. I really like to lift weights, yeah. but not recently. Mm-hmm. Um, recently I like to jam, and I like to dance with a bunch of fun women, not butthole women. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you find that? It's like, do you interview, interview everybody really, at the gym? <laughs> yeah. Well, there's some really nice ones over at the Nubbin Ridge Presbyterian <laughs> in the gym. But um, but no, that I know that that's what people need to do is you find yeah. what you... Because the things that used to set me on fire and I felt like a million dollars doing, I don't want to do anymore. Uh-huh. I don't. I mean, I don't want a trainer that's going to... That's 25, that's going to make me climb a wall. Right. I don't need that stress. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't need to... Um, push a big i don't even know what they call those things i don't the sleds i don't need to push a sled or those tractor tires and the train i don't need to lift a tractor tire yeah i need things that you know because yeah. i do feel like it stresses me out but i like to hike i like yeah. to be in nature and we're yeah. in a beautiful area we in are. east tennessee perfect place for that. Mm-hmm. but i like to walk with somebody fun not a butthole <laughs> i like to, to walk and talk about Fun things like fingernail polish, <laughs> stuff like that. I don't want to talk about politics. I don't want to talk about any of that. You know that I don't, I have not been able to read since I had my crash. <laughs> so I don't want to get into something serious. But I, <laughs> but I like to walk and do, but, and I know that's yeah. the most important thing is what do you enjoy doing? Yeah. yeah. And I do like yoga and that kind of thing. I don't want to get in hot yoga. I don't Mm-mm. want to get in 105 degrees no. and feel like an animal in a cage and I'm going to chew my arm off because I can't get out the door. <laughs> I don't like that. I want to, but you love body pump. Mm-hmm. I do little, combat. What? Mm-hmm. I do like all kickboxing? my aggression. <laughs> combat. Yeah, How does your combat. little frail arms 
knock a big bag. <laughs> oh, why? It, combat is. A, <laughs> oh, I don't go near a bag. Oh, you don't? Uh, no, what no, are you doing? It's all just the motions. Oh, the motions. Yes. Yeah, so you're, you're not like having it. it. Oh, not, yeah, I would. So, mm-mm. so you're not hitting anything. No, just air. Or just oh, imaginary things and people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, so you're doing yeah. that and body pump and what Step. else? Step. Stay up. And yoga. And you do yoga? Mm-hmm. How many times a week? I try to do that once a week. Okay. I try. I bet you could hold your little frail body up in a downward dog <laughs> for a long time. Because look <laughs> at you. Okay. All right. So we know that, that that helps everything. Yes. Okay. So you're on progesterone. You're talking about the things that you give people. Dim, milk thistle. Progesterone, sometimes testosterone. In perimenopause. In perimenopause. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So before we go on to menopause, I want to take a little couple second break. A okay. few seconds. Okay. A little break. Dude, we're back. You are. Yeah, we are. You are. <laughs> I am too. Surprise. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we wanted to talk. We're talking about how you treat menopause symptoms now. Menopause symptoms. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we've so, gone over progesterone, testosterone. Milk thistle dim. The bills are for peri- perimenopause when we're still making estrogen. Yeah. Okay. So then menopause happens, or we call it menopause, when we stop making estrogen. And you have to make estrogen to have a period. Okay. So typically, typically when we start going into menopause or we reach menopause, we haven't, we've stopped having periods. And official menopause, official definition of menopause is the absence of a period for a year. And usually in the presence of an elevated follicle stimulating hormone, FSH. When that's elevated, that is consistent with menopause because that message comes from your pituitary gland. And that's a hormone message that goes to your ovaries and says, hey, we need more estrogen, we need less estrogen, whatever the message is. When the level goes high, it means that your brain, your pituitary gland is screaming at your ovaries saying, hey, hey, we need more estrogen up here. Where's the estrogen? Mm-hmm. Did you hear me about the estrogen? <laughs> and the, and the number keeps going up. So when the number's high, just think of that as your brain screaming at your ovaries for more estrogen. So um, absence of period for a year and high FSH. So when that happens... Then we get a whole new set of symptoms, um, and that's where the stuck brain happens, the hot flashes, the night sweats, the um, joint pain, you know, the hair falling out, fatigue. The f- fatigue is a big one. Uh, you know, people just all of a sudden just have zero energy to do anything. They're anxious, they're depressed, they're have low motivation, they can't sleep, they gain weight. Um, And we were saying in a previous episode, those are all symptoms of depression too. So oftentimes they'll get diagnosed with depression at that time. Mm -hmm. But when you replace estrogen, you're going to help with those symptoms. So say you say like you, you've seen me and you've been in perimenopause and we've already put you on progesterone, testosterone. Right. Um, And then you start getting some low estrogen symptoms. You stop having periods if you still have a uterus. Then we can add on some estrogen. Um, And the same way with compounding, uh, using compounded hormones, we can do a, a lot of different forms like creams and caps and trochees and drops and vaginal uh, creams. And, um, and then there's some manufactured options um, that like the estrogen patch, Um, there is an S which is estradiol, which is bioidentical and um, an estradiol tablet, which is again is bioidentical. There are estrogens like Primarin, which is a conjugated estrogen that is actually a horse estrogen. So it's a different molecule than the estrogen that you make. So, but that is available. And then we have some other 
um, synthetic estrogens that are, are out there too that are manufactured. So um, by replacing the estrogen, we can help with all those symptoms. And it can, I had one uh, person on Facebook ask, you know, if it would, if the systemic estrogen would help with vaginal dryness and it can, what I would say that the difference between uh, replacing estrogen for uh, menopause in menopause and having a monthly cycle is that with menopause estrogen replacement, you're basically getting the same amount of estrogen every day in a cycle you're getting a big bath of estrogen one time during the month. The estrogen really spikes up. Mm -hmm. And during that time, you know, everything gets nicely estrogenized. Everything's bathed in estrogen. And so because we're not getting that estrogen bath once a month, um, we can still have vaginal dryness, even if we've resolved most or all of our systemic symptoms. So sometimes we have to do some vaginal estrogen in addition to whatever else you're taking for the other symptoms. Um, And we were talking about pellets last time as an Mm -hmm. option. And you said you knew some people who did have done pellets or went to Atlanta. (laughs) You went to Atlanta, somebody and everybody got in a car, made a girl's trip out of it. I think somebody got drunk and left their purse somewhere (laughs) and they got pellets put in. (laughs) Yeah. So some people do real well with pellet insertion. Um, That's where we insert um, pellets under the skin, usually in the top part of the bottom area. Um, And they usually do that every three to four months. I don't, I don't uh, do pellet insertion, but um, there are, several other other practitioners in the area who do that, and certainly in other areas, uh, other geographic areas, people do pellet insertion. And some people do that, do fabulously well on that. They feel great. Of Mm -hmm. course, I tend to see the pellet disasters, you know, people who've had pellets and come in and, you know, they've got everything going wrong because because it does raise the levels quite high. Uh, of both testosterone and estrogen um, if you're getting both types of pellets. So anyway, but that is an option, certainly. Okay. Uh, I myself, to each his own, but I would, if I saw something sticking out of my skin, if I had to have it put, it would give me the willies. Yeah. And I just don't think I could do it. Also, you say that it can be a big, you get a big dosage mm-hmm. of it, but then you can only get them how many yeah. How many months? Yeah, you know? every three or four months, yeah. So then if it if it dips, then you're stuck. You can't do anything right. until it's time again to get your until it's time again to get your um pellets again. Yeah. You know, and I don't know what that would yeah, so it, some people can feel real even, but you know, sometimes when we first get when they're first inserted, we get this big spike of hormone levels and people don't feel, you know, or might have some hormone overload symptoms. Um, And then, and then in the middle of the time they feel pretty well. And then when they're due for more pellets, they start becoming symptomatic again. So, uh, and not to say that they are necessarily as bad as they were pre pellet insertion, but, they do start having symptoms again and that's how you know when you need more pellets. So, I mean, that's a downside is that you can't keep the symptoms controlled most or all the time. Okay. I know we're getting close to to our time, but let me ask you because you you go, you go around, you know me, I'm a talker. I get out, I'm telling people I'm on hormones. I'm getting, I'm taking progesterone, little testosterone cream. Um, and people go, oh, my gosh, you don't need to be taking hormones. You'll get cancer like my Aunt Betty in 82. Mm-hmm. Okay, so can you tell people about, because everybody's scared to death to take estrogen. Yeah. What you told me one time in the office about, and you know me, I'm in brain fog. I don't remember what you said. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got to have a little bit of estrogen. Mm. 
I don't know what you said, but anyway, <laughs> about that, about the cancer risk, about yeah. all of that. Yeah. Well, certainly nothing is risk free, um, but ways that we can reduce our risk as much as possible. And, and I'm assuming you're talking about cancers of the female organs specifically. I guess so, because yeah. when you're out and about and you're talking about hormones, people go, "Oh, yeah, horse urine." <laughs> oh, you know, yeah. it's witchcraft. Yeah. Okay, can you tell? Can you talk about that? Well, so clearly, lower using the lowest dose possible to relieve your symptoms in terms of estrogen is ideal, um, and that's one upside to the use of compounded hormones. Is you can customize the dose to the lowest dose possible to relieve your symptoms. Certainly balancing it with estrogen, I mean, with progesterone, which we talked about earlier, Mm -hmm. it slows cell growth in the sex organs, keeping those two hormones really balanced. And then um, when I replace um, estrogen, I use typically two, sometimes three, all three of our estrogen forms. We have three types of estrogen in our body. And one of them is estriol, and it's a very weak estrogen, so it's not... stimulatory like estradiol, and it can't convert into estradiol or estrone, which is another stimulatory estrogen. So when when I replace estrogen, I use estriol and estradiol. And estriol, the weak estrogen, I usually use um, is a bigger portion of the estrogen than the estradiol. So 60, 70, 80% will be estriol. And the lower percentage is estradiol. So that can also help. Again, that book I mentioned earlier in the mm-hmm. episode that John Lee's um, What Your Doctor May Not Tell You About Breast Cancer is very helpful if you really, really want to be informed about how uh, what hormones have effect on what uh, tissue in our body. Okay. It's really, really and helpful. And if a woman says, I'm not doing any of it, I'm going rogue, I'm not doing any of it, I just am going to tough my way through it. What should she expect? <laughs> well, and that is and that is absolutely an option. That's certainly an option. And I always tell women that, that that's, that's an option. It, just things will happen without your hormones. You will lose bone density. Your cholesterol will likely go up. Your blood pressure will likely go up. Um, you, you might be bald. <laughs> you might be bald. <laughs> You might be asking for wigs for Christmas and, um, you know, and you might have all those other symptoms. So you might end up on a sleep medicine or or antidepressant. Um, You might be able to let your grandchildren play in your stomach (laughs) for fun and your butt. (laughs) Because it's just mush. Yeah. So it's going to be harder to lose weight. It's going to be harder to maintain a healthy physique. For most women, I, you know, obviously there are some women who just skip to the do day right and, through it. And, they're just, and I know those heifers. Yeah, and, I, and, I, and I don't see those people usually. You so. don't. Everybody's on their last leg when they get to you. So, but I, I know that it does happen. And, and certainly that's, that's a okay if they feel yeah. well. And, and, and women who don't have estrogen definitely, uh, and we see it in study after study that they, will tend to have more memory loss and dementia. If they don't because have estrogen. estrogen is very neuroprotective. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. I know. That's why more women have dementia than men. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, so there are some things that are going to happen or, or likely to happen um, if you don't have hormones, but that is absolutely an a, a choice that someone can and should make if that's what they're comfortable with. Mm-hmm. That's important. So, yeah. Oh, okay. And we'll be talking more about this in the future. A there's a lot, that. lot to talk about. Okay. So we will do that again in another episode. But we want to read a couple. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> we have got these sweetest people say the sweetest things about our podcast, and that makes us feel so good. Um, I love y'all. I'm a 44-year-old mom of three, originally from Little Rock, Arkansas, but now live in Maryland with my Yankee husband from New Jersey. (laughs) I called my mom and sister and both said, go listen to them now, and don't do it while you're driving in the car because something, I don't know, you'll laugh so hard, I don't know, something that got cut off. But anyway, (laughs) 
thank you for um, mix, missing Dixie. Is what her name is. Do you want to read one? Sure. This is from uh, one of our ma- ma- male listeners, which is pretty exciting. Uh, as a husband, father, having this this source of information for me to better understand what my wife goes through uh, or will go through as our marriage continues is invaluable. Having Leanne give her w- real world experience and that balanced with solid medical insight makes this easily the most entertaining podcast. <laughs> oh, and he's he goes by madder than a bag of ferrets. Yeah, that, There's a story there. <laughs> I'd like to hear that. That's right. That's right. And so we really appreciate your comments. That's that's very helpful and encouraging to us. And uh, keep it coming. I know. And, Please and tell, and... tell all your friends about our podcast. We yes. really appreciate that. I also want to, before we head out, I want to um, thank Forrest Wenzel, who wrote our theme music. That I love. That's, that, that is an earworm for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and and we love it. And and if you want to hear more of his music, you can go to iTunes and search for his uh, songs. One of which is um, "Butterfly Girl," which is a fantastic piece. I'd love for you to hear it. "Butterfly Girl," Forrest Wenzel. Check it out. I know. God love him. He sits here and has to listen to me and my dry vagina. Yeah. Fifty-three <laughs> <laughs> year old woman. Oh, I hope he wants to marry and have children someday. I, I hope know. I don't ruin that well, for him. I'll come after you if it did. <laughs> and and you're about to you're gonna go empty your bladder, right? And, I am. and we're we're gonna again. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Sweaty and pissed. Sweaty.